Well, I think as a business, we're, we're a retail solutions business, right? And so this part of our business, I think is often thought of itself in segments as service segments. And I think what we're, we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to make those segments collaborate better together. So offer a seamless solution to a brand as opposed to, you know, a, a service um, or a sort of menu of services. Um, I also think that we're trying to evolve that part of the business and, you know, to move from kind of retail marketing services to marketing solutions. Um, that is a mindset shift. That is something that people need to, and, and it sounds quite silly, but you know, in a name change, that's where you often get an adoption of mentality. And so the more people are talking about marketing solutions as opposed to you know, retail marketing services, they'll start to get that there is this collaboration effect, that that's really where um, the, the best value is for the brands, is where we can put things together as opposed to just this menu of do you want or don't you want, but rather creating something like a solution to be able to provide to brands instead of you know, offering them this, this bouquet of services. objectives are a couple of things. Um, to critically analyze the services within this division and see how relevant they are. Do they have a unique selling point? Um, do brands appreciate their services, meaning are they relevant? Do they add value? Um, are they at the right pricing point where they remain relevant versus their competitive set? Because all of them have um, very strong competitive sets. Um, and then to work out where do we go from here? So where do we invest behind? Um, what do we choose not to invest behind? Where do we deploy our talent? Where do we build? How do we structure it? And I think we've come a couple of steps on that journey. So I think we know quite clearly where we are. I think we're now structuring it to be designed to where it needs to go. Um, and I think over the next, call it 12 to 18 months, we're gonna invest behind parts of it significantly to, to, to really accelerate it. I think you know, some of the parts of that business have massive opportunity. You know, if you look at the shopper engagement business, we, 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 we're hugely behind the curve of where we should be as an organization. Um, we, we've seen businesses or, or almost peak and die or be sold in the time that we're kind of getting to build this part of our business. And so I, I think if we direct the right amount of resource, um, both in people and in capital, um, and in technology, we'll, we'll find a significantly different business over time. Um, and so I guess, you know, the overarching goal is to, to see how best does it fit together, where should we invest behind, and then kind of where does it take us over the next five, six months. Komoto, who's been in our business for a long time, who knows you know, the business in and out, was on the GNI team specifically, and um, he's taken over the visual merchandising division, which was the kidding and gifting business, the warehousing business, uh, and the installations business. And I think that we are changing that business and we're starting to morph one or two of them into some new um, service and solution sets, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we brought in Justin Dennis, who's running the shopper business um, specifically um, shopper and demo, so that's the clicks demo business, the pick and pay business, the tactical um, ad hoc business and the, the, the tenured business in, in, in Castrol. Um, and his goal is really to look at all of the pieces that we have, both that we're invested in or that we get to see because we, we see a lot of um, new startup businesses, new technologies, interesting innovations, different parts of the market. And, and, and I think, you know, I think that the world has changed from I'm a company and I offer services A, B, and C to actually, I know I can offer A, B, and C, but they can offer D, E, and F, and they can offer G, and actually if we collaborate, we can together offer something that's much better than if we each offer it separately. And so I think what he's busy doing now is ascertaining what we have, then what we have in the broader kind of group, and then what we have in our peripheral network, whether that be the WPP network or whether that be people that we meet on an ongoing basis. And, and as we encounter clients and, and understand their problems, um, how we can put these together as solutions to offer them in a shopper space. Because I think, I think we have a real opportunity to, to do something great there. I think um, the, the shopper agency, sort of 10 years ago, shopper agencies became very popular and then nobody could really define what they were and then they all disappeared and now everyone became a digital agency because like, you know, digital. 
And so I think what he's busy on a journey to do is kind of bring back the relevance of a shopper agency. Um, and we've got these wonderful partners in Elevator and Student Village um, and our e-commerce and our media metrics business. And together, there is a real powerful shopper business there. Um, and I think that we, we need to establish what a shopper agency 2.0 is and really take that to clients. And, and what we're finding is when we take them, this as a concept, because we know how sales work, we have a much better opportunity of delivering something with an ROI versus agencies who just sort of take, you know, kind of concept and, and, and call, it, call it creative. But together, we, we've got a really good opportunity. So Justin's heading that side of the business and, and KG's heading the, the visual merchandising side of the business.